You know, it, it's hard to explain to people who don't know just how influential the kids in the hall are. Or at, at the very least, um, just how huge they were for a moment in the 90s. You, you kind of just you kind of just had to be there to fully grasp that. I, for one, was lucky enough to grow up in a house with HBO, and luckily I was also able to catch these shows many non-stop blocks on early 90s Comedy Central, and I absolutely loved it. I mean, here I am on my birthday way back in 2005 with my buddy Albert prank calling people at 4 in the morning while getting our heads smashed by my buddy Will. Classic. Yet by that time, I was already a longtime fan as I grew up watching this show, perhaps when I was way too young. The kids consist of Dave Foley, who will later go on to star in news radio and appear in many films and successful voiceover roles alike. I recommend his episode of Marin, or It's Pet. And to be honest, here with uh, Brain Candy, I mean, he has one of the funniest lines in the movie. Maybe. Well, it could be it. This could it be, it. be it. Jesus Christ! I think we got it! Yeah! And who are you? Just a guy. We also have Mark McKinney, who would go on to be an SNL cast alum as well as having one hell of a career in film and voiceover work as well. And to be honest, he has one of the funniest lines in the whole movie. You're not sure? Uh, come on. Okay. All right, Alice is having one. And uh, Chris, you're having a drink. All right. All right, all right, hang on. Baxter? And then there's Kevin McDonald, who can forget him, who I always consider to be kind of the face of the group for some reason. Maybe because he's so recognizable, I don't know. And you know, he was definitely the guy that I got the most exposure from in those days with films like Godson and A Senior Trip especially, which was also directed by Brain Candy's Kelly Macon, by the way. And here, well, Kevin kind of plays the film's lead, if you will, and along with the rest of the cast, appears in nearly every scene and to be honest he also has one of the funniest lines in the whole movie what about the gun did you give the gun a good cleaning yep good boy Bruce McCullough, who I was always fond of and was always happy to see pop up on TV, you know, especially as a people helper with Tom Green. It's time to help people. Okay, you, you go. You up, you up, you up. We're people helpers. We're people helpers. We're people. We're, we're, we're people helpers. And his later directorial effort with Tom Green and Stealing Harvard I thought was hilarious, as well as other movies that he's done with kind of like other non genre stuff. And, you know, Bruce has quite a colorful resume when it comes to his directing work, let's just say that. And here again, we get many different characters, many of which are abhorrent or offensive, but none as much as McCullough's Cancer Boy, <laughs> a character that caused a bit of a ruckus, but, you know, back to that a little later. And to be honest, um, well, he has some of the funniest lines in the whole movie. We almost kissed. And we cannot forget about the immortal Scott Thompson, perhaps the most versatile and my personal favorite of the bunch. This dude is just so effortlessly funny. And, you know, he's that part of the comedy troupe that is just needed. You know, it would be totally different without him, kinda. Scott's life story is so amazing, and his one-man show, his buddy Cole, would have taken over the world if it wasn't due to certain real-life tragedies. But everybody just loves this dude. And to be honest, he has some of the funniest lines in the whole movie. Guess what? I'm gay. Yay! <laughs> so basically, short version of the story, after the guys met and started their comedy troupe in Canada, well, they knew they were on to something. And when Lorne Michaels came to town to scout for acts, the fellas got their chance and they blew Lorne Michaels away. Funny how that works. And in turn, their fateful meeting would start a long-lasting relationship with the king of Saturday night. But it seemed that like Lorne Michaels was kind of looking for the anti-SNL here, and goddamn did he find it. The kids in the hall are absolutely 
Fearless. And since it was airing on HBO, well, they were allowed to go way further than their sketch comedy peers, and they did. The kids in particular are notorious for their initial six-month run that was basically completely uncensored. That kind of put them on the map. But yet that was right before having their heads crushed lightly by the studio as they are asked to kind of tone it down just a bit. Gotcha! I don't think there was ever an episode that didn't have something censored or cut or or endless discussions about but we were with them all the time the people that censored and we wore them down they just got so tired of fighting us by our third season they were letting everything go out here's a little rundown of some of my favorite stuff from this series I mean, this show largely influenced my overall taste in comedy, and there's just so many memorable characters, and here's just a few. Because if you're fat, you end up living in a trailer park, gossiping, and craving country and western music. I was incensed. I mean, really, isn't there some sort of a dress code or door policy? Of course, I could see how he got in. What with those faggy little hands of his, <laughs> mincing around the dance. Benny. Benny. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. Over time, the skits would get more and more elaborate, and right at the end of the show's run, well, there was still demand and offers were on the table for other projects featuring the guys. And since the troupe kind of based their careers on Monty Python anyways, well, it seemed the next logical step would be a TV special, spin-off series, or feature-length film. And at this point, I mean, basically the guys could have done whatever the hell they wanted to, and they had all the support from Lorne Michaels, you know. And some of the guys' careers were already kind of kicking off, you know, around this time, like some of them pretty majorly, but they decided to take the Hollywood route rather than keep their small screen legacy going. A legacy that would ironically return later with heavy brain candy repercussions. But again, back to that in a little while. It's crazy to think that there was a time when major studios are willing to get behind a comedy troupe like this for a feature film. Something I largely attribute again to the involvement of Lord Michaels and SNL, but also with their dealings with Paramount Pictures in the early 90s, where all of these major films found a home from SNL and they all had that classic Paramount look. I, I just love it. And basically all the guys needed to do was come up with a great idea for a movie. Roratora Pharmaceutical, makers of the world's leading tablet for gas, Fascinating. was in trouble. My empire is crumbling! They needed a new product. We might be releasing the most effective antidepressant ever! Go on. They don't have my notes with me. <laughs> they needed it. Now. And mostly this movie is about a group of scientists who discover a cure for depression. What it does is, reaches into your brain chemically and locates your happiest memory chemically and then locks onto that emotion and freezes it chemically. I'm playing a character named Grievo. This is bullshit. I play a white sort of like trashy uh, street woman. When you can say goodbye to this. No, yeah. Baby. And then there's Mrs. Herdicure, and that's an old woman. Doctor, I haven't felt this good since they said it's not malignant. And then I also play an asshole. Can you get me something to eat before I chew my f***ing hand off? <laughs> it was Mark McKinney that came up with the idea of parodying Prozac during the process of coming up with an idea after many other ideas. Some of the best ones being um, them playing the guys that always lose to the Harlem Globetrotters. I mean, that would have been hilarious. And another one that was called Asshole where a guy kills serial killers. But they eventually came back to an idea called The Drug from McKinney's idea about you know the Prozac stuff, only with a stronger lean on the pharmaceutical industry overall. And now, you know, all the guys were involved here, but when it came down to actually writing and putting stuff, you know, the pen to the paper, it was basically Bruce, Norm, and Kevin that took over. As the others in the show, they kind of were just kind of blowing up at the time, let's be honest. You know, and the three of them made it all work, and they tightened things up together, and they all knew each other very well, so it, it just worked. And they were ahead of the curve with the pharmaceutical stuff, especially with, like, all the gay subplots and stuff that was obviously... Um, you know, the choice of Scott Thompson, but it makes for some seriously some of the best stuff in the film. I'm gay. 
Unfortunately, Dave Foley and Kevin went through a divorce during filming, not with each other, but with their, their wives. And, you know, there was deaths in the family, and it was just an overall hard time for all the guys making the movie. And a hard time writing the film along with Norm Hiscock. Um, so Dave eventually left the writing process after a while. And then the guys couldn't agree in the writer's room. A lot of bumping heads and whatnot. You can hear the guys talk about it. But uh, but also, you, you know, they, they look back at this time fondly. You know, it was an overall easy shoot aside from them getting into each other's heads. What can you say? The, the kids and all. But all that being said, you know, and all that happening uh, as far as the production goes, Lorne Michaels didn't care much and he let them do their thing. But he did want some original TV show characters to be prevalent, which is something they didn't really want to do, but there are some familiar faces throughout. And much to Lorne Michaels' chagrin, there was even a brand new character largely based on himself that was featured in the film, who played the boss of the drug company, Don. And I mean, it's pretty obvious who they're parodying here. <laughs> Look, are we ever going to get the big table in here, or do I have to go out and cut down that fucking tree myself? The film was a Paramount-produced film, which did all their stuff, all the SNL movies, from Wayne's World to Superstar to Ladies' Man, all of them. And it had that classic Viacom-era Paramount look. All those movies just have such a regal feel to them, I love it. Something that's lost on major studios nowadays, in my opinion, you know, having a certain signature look. Uh, aside from Sony, I guess. But Paramount did fully back the guys. However, they did have one issue with a certain cancerous boy character. And really, uh, they, they wanted to see his complete exclusion from the film. They were not down with Cancer Boy. Did you see? Did you see? The doctor and me, did you see? And I guess they were just trying to avoid the fallout and the feedback from the general public. Which they did, but um, unfortunately they, they received it either way but this time from the kids themselves as they refuse to delete any characters from the film and demand their deal be met when it came to creative freedom which paramount granted but it's it's rumored that this caused the studio to basically torpedo the film and as far as marketing goes and the release and whatnot and what can i say that seems to be the case <laughs> But Cancer Boy wasn't the only cause for concern, as the production also made news when people started calling the police to report someone floating around on balloons dangerously high in the air. <laughs> Laughs per minute, man. I mean, I'm talking brain candy is up there. There's a lot of shit going down. Although it's hard to tell if, you know, non-kids in the hall fans would think it's as funny as I do, but for those of us having an endless average weekend, it's all we really need. Well, that and a shower. I was just, uh, taking a shower. Yep, just, uh, had myself a shower. Now, I guess it's not all good news here, as, you know, with a project like this, so many different characters, of course you're gonna get some characters cut from the film. Um, if Dave Foley really got the shit in of the stick as far as getting his characters cut. He had some good ones, man. Like, there was an incompetent cleaning lady. Um, like, this sponge man. <laughs> of some forlorn burger boy. That one's probably my favorite. I saw a flower down by the lake. I ate a bug and dropped my cake. The drug, she no good. Do not take. And the film was just filled with so many memorable lines, man. Like, till this day, whenever I hurt my finger, I say, Ouch! My, my fucking, fucking finger. finger! Or like, you know, whenever I'm hanging out with the guys, I always say, You go over there and fuck them! We'll stay here and masturbate. Yes, sir! Go! Now there goes a man! Like with most worthwhile comedies, this was a huge <laughs> flop. While the show did have its legion of fans, and in turn, you know, the film did have a great opening weekend, as they all saw the film as soon as they could, unfortunately, nobody else did. Well, C-School did, I guess. The boss of a powerful drug company has just issued orders for a new tranquilizer to be rushed into production with hilarious results in Brain Candy, an audacious, clever, very funny new satire from the comedy troupe known as Kids in the Hall. They play many of their parts in drag, and the joke doesn't stop there. Brain Candy will appeal to young moviegoers who are fans of Kids in the Hall. I've seen them a couple of times on late night TV, and I often thought they seemed good only by comparison with the recent Saturday Night Live troops. But in Brain Candy, they're funnier than they've ever been on TV, and I recommend this picture as kind of a midnight show cult picture, which I suspect 
it's destined to become. But surprise, surprise. I thought this know, movie was awful, oh, no, Roger. dreadful, no, terrible, no. stupid, idiotic, no. unfunny, no. labored, forced. Oh, Roger. Painful. Roger. I got to hand it to C School, though. That guy got it. That guy knows what's up. As far as Ebert, I mean, I... the drag stuff was so, funny. So what? And considering the guys kind of bumped heads a lot, you know, I don't know, the past 20 years before this, they decided to finally take a little break. Even so, years later, the guys would return with a special series. And of course, most recently, when they reunited with new episodes of the show where Brain Candy was basically the catalyst for the whole thing. Really coming full circle as far as the kids' lore surrounding the film and whatnot. And I mean, upon rewatching the new series, I can verify the guys are just as fearless as ever. And it was just so great to see the film acknowledged and he even and, you know, even have some familiar faces return. Who's financing this time? The devil again? Well, sort of. Amazon. Are you crazy? Oh. That may be the group's greatest weapon, their flawless and seamless storytelling with multiple characters that all feel developed like completely, like completely developed people in a sense, and not just the same damn people playing every role. It really is something to behold even all these years later. And looking back at all the comedy troops that are all the big ones, you know what I mean? All the ones that are considered classic. <clears throat> I mean, just to name a few, we have Monty Python, SCTV, Mad TV, even SNL at the time. Well, they were all, let's say, still small TV productions, basically. Quality stuff for what it was, but not necessarily quality productions, if you will. In another place where the kids in the hall absolutely thrived, and with the push the envelope attitude of all the guys, you know, in my opinion, the kids in the hall are the best of the bunch, at the very least, the most unique. Overall, the film was a success when it comes down to it, and as part of their legacy, it is a very much needed part of the puzzle. Scott, you should get in your costume for this next scene. <laughs> <laughs> I, I for one feel like a lot more people have seen this movie a lot of them liked it that it's more beloved than I think it is it's just people are afraid to speak out about it because of cancer boy let me know down below what you thought of kids in the hall brain candy and if you're a fan of kids in the hall at all let me know your favorite sketch or whatever I would like to maybe return to the kids in the hall universe at some point <laughs> Staunch gang, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and remember this, guys. Life is short. Life is shit. But soon it will be over. Come on, let's celebrate.